we first discussed the electric field due to a charged surface or a distribution of charges, we used the electric field being the integral of k dq r squared r hat, where we then evaluated if this was a line of charge, we evaluated, and this was point P, and this was a distance R, and all this was plus Q. We evaluated all of the electric field contributions due to all the little pieces at point P. So those were all the little bits of electric field. Uh, similarly, we can use Ampere's law. Similarly, we can find the magnetic field due to a long current carrying wire is using the Biot-Savart, and that is that the mu naught i over two pi times ds crossed with r hat over r squared. That's the uh, bo sub r. Now, this was for finding the magnetic field at a point that is somewhere, if this was my current carrying wire, somewhere up you know, up here, here's a point P, and it's a distance D from the wire there, and we can find the direction, the magnitude of the magnetic field due to this current carrying wire here. So this current carrying wire creates a magnetic field at point P. Now again, you would um, put your thumb in the direction of the current and then your fingers would point into the page below the wire and out of the page above the wire. And so actually at point P, your uh, magnetic field would be coming out of the page. So the Bios of R allows us to calculate the magnetic field at point P. And the integral form of the electric field allows us to find the electric field at point P above this, this charge distribution. Now, for electric fields, we found that if there is high symmetry, we are able to use Gauss's law to determine the electric field around a highly symmetrical charge distribution. So for the case of a positive charged sphere, we would create a Gaussian surface symmetrical around that positive charge distribution there and make it, you know, some distance R from the center while maybe the radius of this charged sphere was, you know, capital R, and we would then find that the charge enclosed over epsilon naught was the closed surface integral of E, the electric field, dotted with the area vector that has a magnitude equal to the area of the, the surface. So remember, a lot of times dA was equal to um, the surface area. So for a sphere, it was a four pi r squared, you know, for example. So we can do the same thing though for current carrying wires using what we call Ampere's law, okay? And so just like we draw this Gaussian surface around this GS stands for Gaussian surface. Do 
as we, as we draw a symmetrical Gaussian surface around the charge distribution, we will draw a um, symmetrical loop around the current carrying wire. So in this case, we've got a current carrying wire um, with the current directed to the right. And so in that case, we would have um, our thumb point in the direction of the current and then our magnetic field lines would be into the page below the wire. So you stick your thumb in the direction of the current and you'll get magnetic field lines below the wire, get magnetic field lines coming towards you above the top of the wire and overall the magnetic field lines will run in these symmetrical circles around the wire. So imagine that's coming down in front, going back up, coming down in front, going up behind, down in front, up behind. And so all along these displacements, this distance R from, from the current carrying wire, we have these magnetic fields so if you zoom in here, they would have a magnetic field directed tangent to the green circle here, um, kind of coming out of the page. You'd have one down the page, kind of like a little DB there, a little bit of the magnetic field. And then imagine one kind of going into the page here, DB. And you can't quite see it, but behind the page, there's a, a DB up the page. So if you sum up all of those little bits of magnetic field, um, they're all in line with the loop, this green loop that I've drawn here. So what Ampere did was thought, well, if I were to, I can add up sum up along this closed loop all of the magnetic field strength, all the magnetic field vectors, and I'm gonna dot it with all of the little distances around the wire. So this little DB has a little DL vector with it there. And the magnetic field is in the direction of that little bit of DE. And so because uh, the dot product by definition, if you remember, um, a dot product, if you have the vector A dotted with vector B, you get the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two. So that's the, the rule there. And so in terms of our Ampere's Law here, so if DL is parallel to DB, then that means that our B vector times DL times cosine of zero degrees, which would be equal to one. So then what is this DL? Well, the integral of DL, as we go all the way around the loop, well, I could write it as zero to two pi of R d theta, because a little bit of DL is the arc length of the loop. So then that would give us 2 pi r is equivalent to the integral of DL. So then we'll have that the closed loop, not a surface like the electric field, the closed loop integral of B dot DL would be equal to B times 2 
pi r. Now for a long current carrying wire, we saw already that the magnetic field was equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. So then that means that b times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught times i. So that means that this must be equal to mu naught times i, which means that if we go back up to our surface, pardon me, our line integral up here, then we'll get that mu naught i is equal to the closed line integral of the magnetic field vector dotted, dot product, with the little bit of line length DL vector. And this specifically has to be the amount of current enclosed by the loop. And so what we're gonna do is for a long current carrying wire, we're going to consider the loop around the current carrying wire as being, this is our current, and we create a uh, an Amperian loop. That's not very pretty. So our Amperian loop around the current carrying wire will be a distance of r from the current carrying wire. Then again, if the current is pointing to the right, the magnetic field due to the current carrying wire would be into the page below the wire and out of the page above the wire. And so we could add up all of the little magnetic field vectors all around, along this closed loop and the current enclosed would be I and we would take the closed surface integral of B dot DL. Now that's pretty easy, kind of like finding the electric field due to a point charge using Gauss, Gauss's law, but where this comes in handy is when we have a big cable and there is a current flowing through the cable. And then we can find the magnetic field inside the cable. And then we can find the magnetic field outside the cable. So as the distance from the center of the cable goes from zero to R, little r, where the radius of our cylinder is capital R.